almost every part of your phone, the car that your mum drives, and even the house that you live in are composed of minerals that come from the Earth's crust. So let's dig in and take a look. Did you know that the Earth is made up of four parts? We have the solid core, there's a liquid core, the mantle and the crust. Now, of these four parts, the crust is the most important to humans because it's easily accessible. I mean, it's always under your feet wherever you go. And compared to the other three parts of the Earth, uh, the crust is really, really, really thin. If you were to drill a hole under your feet all the way down to the center of the Earth, you would need to drill down nearly 4,000 miles. That's 6,370 kilometers. Wow, that's a long way. Uh, but how many miles would you have to drill down to get to the mantle? Well, only about 12. That's less, much less than 1% of the total thickness of all the rock right down to the center of the planet. Now, even though the crust is really, really thin, it's really, really important to humans. In fact, almost everything that you see around you was made from minerals that came from the Earth's crust. And you're probably thinking, wow, well, that's a lot of minerals. And it is. But did you know that nearly 90% of all the minerals in the crust are mostly made up of just two elements, oxygen and silicon? And because of this, we call those kinds of minerals silicates. Now, left to their own, oxygen and silicon will always form something called a, a silica tetrahedron. Wow, I know what you're thinking, that's a big word, but it actually makes sense. You see, the word tetra just means four, and the word hedron just means face. In other words, four faces. And when you combine a whole bunch of these silica tetrahedrons, you end up with a very common mineral called quartz. Now most of the other 600 minerals, uh, which remember we're calling silicates, uh, are really just a combination of these silica tetrahedrons and some other element that's found in the Earth's crust, uh, such as aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, magnesium, and potassium, among a whole bunch of others. So for example, uh, if I take uh, some silica septahedrons and I combine them with uh, sodium and aluminum, uh, that will turn into a mineral called plagioclase, which is an important mineral in igneous rocks, as we'll see in a later lesson. Now, interestingly, of those 600 minerals, only about 20 or 30 are important to a basic understanding of geology, and that makes things a lot easier when we're trying to study these things. The minerals that make up the other 10% of the Earth's crust are called, you guessed it, non-silicates because, well, they don't have any of those silica tetrahedrons in them. Now, the most common of these are called the carbonates. They contain one uh, carbon atom and three oxygen atoms in their structure. Now, unlike the silicate minerals, which form when magma cools deep in the earth, and that's coming up in a later lesson, most of the carbonate minerals form in water, such as in oceans or in lakes. Calcite is a really good example of this. Calcite forms when marine critters, they extract one molecule of carbonate and one atom of calcium from the water column. And just like humans, who use bricks to make homes, marine critters use calcite to make their homes as well. Another important non-silicate mineral group are the sulfates, which contain one sulfur atom and four oxygen atoms. Now commonly, sulfates form when water heats up and begins to evaporate. Gypsum, a very uh, common sulfate mineral, is very, very important in the building industry and is often used in drywall. Uh, that goes inside your house. Uh, there are the sulfides, the oxides, and the native elements as well. Uh, the sulfides contain sulfur, but no oxygen. And you might have seen this particular uh, uh, sulfide the last time you were down at the river. Uh, this mineral is called pyrite, but you may have heard it called fool's gold because 
many people have been fooled into thinking that they struck it rich when they saw this particular mineral glittering at the bottom of a riverbed. Now the oxides on the other hand have oxygen but uh, they don't have any carbon or sulfur. Uh, next time you see something made of steel, think oxides. Uh, that's because steel has a lot of iron in it and when you combine uh, iron and oxygen you end up with the mineral called hematite which is very very important in mining. Now the last important non-silicate uh, mineral group that I want to talk about are the native elements because uh, they're called native because well they're made up entirely of one element. So for example diamonds, gold, copper and silver are all examples of native elements. And that's all from me Ken Colson here at Science for Kids with Dr. C. Look if you were helped by this video in any way whatsoever then go ahead and pound that like button subscribe and ring the bell while you are there look and if you want to give then please i'd really appreciate that you'll find a link in the description